Father, we just thank you that your word stands open before us today. We thank you that it's a living word and it speaks to us and it deals with us. And Father, that you meet with us as we open it and look at it and try to unwrap it and expand it. We pray for your help with that today. We come weak, we come tired, we come having uh, had imperfect weeks in so many ways. We ask you to take your word now and unfold it for us and unpack it to us and apply it to our hearts so that we might walk with you. We ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. My mother used to have this expression, she said, Holy Moses. Have you come across that? Is it just me? You know that as well, do you? Holy Moses. And it was her way of not saying something that she thought would be worse. You know, who knows where we are on that one. So, uh, you Google it. You Google Holy Moses, and here's what comes up. It's, it's a German thrash metal band <laughs> called Holy Moses. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Amazing, isn't it? I had a little on YouTube and... Yeah, no, no, it's just not... It's a pretty eclectic taste, let's put it like that. Um, they're well known for being fronted by a woman. It's rare for a woman to be the lead singer in a thrash metal band. Um, and also for being one of the very first German thrash metal bands, because you don't think German thrash metal is <laughs> usually Holy Moses. I, did, I, I, I didn't check them out on Spotify, but there's a bit on YouTube you can help yourselves to that. So I looked a bit further, and there, there it was. Um, Holy Moses was a high-velocity aircraft rocket. Uh, in the Second World War. He was in the Second World War he was during the Korean War. I don't think that's what my mother was talking about either. Um, so <coughs> so you, you go a bit further and you find uh, a dictionary online. Uh, Holy Moses, noun, slang, used as an exclamation to express surprise or wonder. Oh, well, <coughs> a bit more disappointing I suppose, but that's the more popular use of the expression, isn't it? 1850 to 1855, they started saying this apparently as a Victorian way of not saying something worse. And of course, Mother, all been up to the minute, bless her, she, uh, she was still using it in the 1960s and 70s. And uh, my grandmother, too, to some extent, I have to admit. Now, we all know Moses was a big man with God, okay? We all know he was a man particularly in the favour of God. But like the rest of us, of course, certainly far from perfect. From time to time he made some huge great public mistakes, didn't he? That's the trouble with being in Christian leadership, your mistakes everybody tends to know about. And like the rest of us, of course, you know, you don't see your own mistakes, do you? <laughs> you see other people's. So there's an issue. But Moses had his problems of that sort. What marked him out then? What could have marked him out as a cherished personality in the eyes of God? <clears throat> so we all tend to think that the sort of person that God esteems is the sort of person who doesn't sin particularly good boy. If that was the whole truth about it, there'd be just one person who he was pleased with ever. And that would be Jesus, wouldn't it? So when you think about it, I can't actually write that God is pleased with you know, good boys. It's not like Father Christmas letters. You know, where Father Christmas brings a present for the good boys and the good girls. There's got to be more to it. So how does Hebrews tell us that he went about living as a sinner who was right with God. There's one steady refrain throughout these verses in Hebrews 11, 23-29 that we're looking at this morning. One steady refrain. Here's, here's some snippets. Verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents. That's interesting. We'll come back to that. Verse 24. By faith, Moses. Verse 27. By faith, he left Egypt. Verse 28. By faith, he kept the Passover and the spring of the blood. Verse 29. By faith, all oh, the people now Somewhere along the line, the people that he's leading have picked this up. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if on dry land. There's a chain, there's a link, there's a progression. Moses' parents showing faith. Moses showing great faith throughout his life. The people showing great faith under Moses' leadership. You see the point? There's an emphasised issue here. Faith. Now that's surprising, isn't it? Isn't that surprising when you think of Moses? When you think of Moses, what do you think of? Moses and the... Let's see. The Red Sea, yeah, Moses and the Red Sea, that's great. We've just done that bit, but Moses gave us what? Thank you. My friend is here. See? Yeah, that's true, isn't it, Caleb? The law. Moses gives the law. Goes up the manual, comes back with the Ten Commandments on two tablets, doesn't it? So you think about Moses and law. You think about Moses and be a good boy. But actually, Hebrews is saying, whoa, steady. Because actually, I think, I think, I think, I think. It wasn't by law that Moses did all these things that he did, taking the people out of Egypt and so on. 
It wasn't by effort or by religiosity or by being good that he achieved these things. It was by the power of God. And power of God gets put forth by bringing people to faith and trust and walking with God. Even way back there with Moses. Now Hebrews is written to second generation Hebrew Christians. It's written to people who have a Jewish heritage that isn't so far away. Granny can tell you all about it. But they've come up in Christian homes because their parents have been converted. And the temptation to go back there is huge on them. And this is the purpose for which, primary purpose, which Hebrews is written in the first place. So well, we've got the epistle of Hebrews. And look, it's emphasizing Moses, not by law, not by ritual, not by rigmarole, by faith. 